Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about inheritance and derived classes. So up until this point, we've been just defining these individual structs and classes in C++. However, there are often times where our structs and our classes may have some overlap, either in terms of uh, the methods that they implement, or maybe in terms of the data that they contain. Now, one of the ways that we have to handle this, right, and you know, have some way of you know, getting rid of this code duplication is through inheritance and derived classes. So what we can do is define some sort of base class that implements some common set of you know, data members and methods and have other classes inherit right, from that base class. And we call these other classes derived classes. So we're gonna be looking at the basics of that today in C++. So let's go ahead and get started. So we can start off with just creating a simple example called inheritance.cpp. Uh, and inside of here, we'll just include IO stream so we can do some printing. And of course, we're going to need a main function here. And what we're gonna start doing is just implementing, a, we're just gonna define a simple uh, base class or a base struct. So we'll define some struct called base. So some struct base. So you know, our base class is just going to look like any other class What's going to differ is how we use it. And inside of here, we can just define a couple things we might want, right? So we can, you know, maybe add a couple data members that might be common to multiple classes that we want to define. So maybe we'll create some uh, data member, some integer X, and maybe another integer Y here. We can also write a constructor for a base class. So just call it base, and maybe it'll take uh, two integers here, right? Some new X and some new y here, right? And we'll go ahead and, uh, and initialize x with new x and y with uh, new y. And we'll just leave the, the body of this constructor empty. And then we can go ahead and maybe just give our base class a simple method here to print out x and y. So some function with a void return type called print x, y. Doesn't take any parameters and we'll just print out, you know, the value of that x is equal to x followed by the value of x followed by a new line character and we'll do the exact same thing for y here right keep things pretty simple now let's say if we want to build off of this base class we want to use this base class for multiple um, derived classes so the way that we can do that is by defining another class down here so let's go ahead and define another uh, structure class this time we'll call it something like uh, derived one here and then we'll do a colon and say, uh, you know, which struct or class we want to inherit from. So in this case, you know, we'll say we want to inherit from our base class here. Now, what exactly does it mean to define a struct like this? Well, this says that, you know, I want to use the data and the methods of our base class, but I want to build on top of it, right, without having to modify this base class. So I can specialize our base class and build on top of it inside of this derived class. So for example, I can add another data member. So something like some integer uh, Z in this case. And then I can go ahead and create my own constructor for this, um, this derived class. So we'll create some constructor called, uh, you know, derived one in this case. And maybe it'll take uh, three parameters, right? An X, Y, and Z value that we want to initialize. So we'll pass in some int new X, uh, new Y, and uh, new Z here. And then we can go ahead and initialize everything. We'll use this initialize, uh, this member initializer list here. So we can directly call our constructor for our base class. So remember derived one is just building on top of our base class. So we can initialize the base component, right, of this derived class here by just calling the constructor for base directly. So we can just initialize base and we can pass in this new X and new Y, right? And what this will do is it will run this constructor here, right? That initializes X and Y. And then of course, we can initialize our Z value here. So we'll initialize Z with new Z. And we'll just have an empty, um, uh, em empty body of our constructor here. Okay. Now, one final thing we can do here is maybe implement another print method, right? This time to print out our member that's specific to derived one. So we can do something like, uh, you know, another void function called something like print Z, um, doesn't take any parameters, and we'll just do std C out, you know, 
um, you know, z is equal to, and then the value of z, right? followed by a new line character, right? So we've created a derived class here. So let's go ahead and kind of summarize things before we start using it. So we started out with this base class here that has a couple data members, a constructor, and a member function. And then we built on top of it by defining another struct that we said inherits from base, right? Then we built on top of it by adding another data member. So not only do we have the data members of our base class, we've added on top of it. So here we also have an, another data member, this integer z. We added a constructor here. And with our constructor, we can both initialize the base class part of our derived class, and then also initialize, say, something like our own uh, data members that we have for this derived class, so z in this case. And then we can you know, add more member functions on top of the ones that we already get from our base class. So we have print xy from our base class, and we added on top of it this print z that's specific to this derived class. So let's go ahead and see how we can use this class here. So you know, one thing we can do is, of course, just create uh, some variable of type uh, derived one here. And we'll call it, say, d1. And then we'll initialize it by calling this constructor with an x, a y, and a z value here. So here we can go ahead and maybe we'll just do 1, 2, and 3 for simplicity here. Really doesn't matter what the values are. Then, you know, using this object, right, we can call both methods from our derived class that we have defined and methods from our base class here. So we can call both this print x, y, and also print z. So we'll do d1.print x, y first, and then followed by d1.print z, right? So what we should see out is a printout of x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2, and z is equal to 3 here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save this, and we'll go ahead and compile this inheritance.cpp with G++, and we'll call our output executable just something like inheritance. Then we can go ahead and run inheritance, and what do we see? Well, we get the exp expected print here. So we get x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2. That's coming from our method that's implemented in our base class. And then we call a method specific to our um, derived class here. So we see uh, this z is equal to 3, right, from that print z method. OK, so that's a little bit of the basics about these derived classes, right, and inheritance. So we have the ability to inherit from some, say, common base class. Um, that way we can build multiple different classes based on some base, right? So for example, here we could create another struct called drive2 that also inherits from base and implement different things here. So maybe it takes some floating point number and maybe it initializes base with some constants rather than arguments here, right? So we could build kind of whatever we want off of this base class as well. Now, one final thing to note here is that we can also speci uh, specify our uh, these uh, these default or these member access specifiers for our inheritance, right? So for example, we can specify if we want say public inheritance or private inheritance or some sort of protected inheritance from say some class that we're inheriting from. That's something that we can specify as well. And it's going to be difference between different between structs and classes, right? Member structs typically have this um, access specifier of public and classes have this ac access specifier of private. Right, but that's something that we can talk about in later videos when we start getting into the design of these uh, classes and these hierarchies. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and do it for today. Uh, you can find this and any of the other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.